Aside from a reshuffling of the Japanese parliament, 2005 was fairly uneventful outside of another earthquake. So let's hit the bricks and talk about bots. It's never a good sign when a series doesn't even get its final episode to air. Jinky Extend is unfortunately one of those series. It focuses around a girl who likes to build robot figures and gets roped into fighting in a real one, but was doomed by being just another robot show at the time. Except it was also packed full of fan service and nobody really dug it. Currently available through Funimation, this would be the emergency rations of a dying mecha fan. Xenosaga the Animation was based on the game of the same name. It's a fine example of incidental mecha, and because it does have mecha elements, it's worth noting here. However, it is also more focused around Cosmos, who is a gynoid more than a mecha, and the show is notable for having a lot of the story beats from the original series cut completely out. For fans of the game, not the genre, it was released in 2007 in the States by ADV Films. Lime Iro Ryukitan X began life as a video game and then got an anime in which supernaturally powered mecha fight evil Russians during the Russo-Japanese War in 1904. The robots are remote controlled instead of directly piloted, which is a nice departure at this point, but the whole concept is so wacky that it's kind of hard to take seriously. And additionally, because it's entering that phase of robot development, there's an awful lot of fan service between the bot battles. The show was not brought over to the States, though it may deserve a second look down the road. Genesis of Aquarion is another throwback style mecha series and is quite obvious in its whole makeup. It's a series that makes no bones about what it's about. The nature of the robots combination is something that should probably come with a content warning and is unfortunately mostly what the show is known for. It would also not be long before this was part of the established norm, but for Aquarion it was something new and rather novel. It also had a substantial amount of CG to it, but it at least moved well enough. It was brought over to the States in 2007 and got a sequel series in 2011. Eureka 7, fully known as Psalm of Planets Eureka 7, is a story based around a whole lot of different ideas which somehow managed to coalesce very well, primarily based around 80s and 90s music and surfing culture. Renton Thurston, the son of a famous but very dead scientist, wants to spend his days sky surfing, but a mecha called the Nirvash and the mysterious Ereka fall nearly literally into his lap and get him embroiled in a battle to save the planet, nominally from the coral critters that are playing havoc with the environment. It gets much bigger than that very quickly, and to say more about the story would do it a disservice. Ereka 7 has many elements similar to the classic Gundam with the rapid expansion of the worldview of the young protagonist, and is a must-watch for any mecha fan, though where it falls in the real to super robot genre is kind of questionable at times. It won numerous awards after it was finished and was a standout show in 2005. Given enough time, the series will likely be remembered as one of the standouts of the decade as well. It was brought over to the States in 2006 and re-released in 2014. Get Ride Am Driver is a very dull show featuring what are essentially idols and robots fighting bug monsters and is not available in the States. It was a stock standard mecha show and makes me think of something that might come out today. It lasted 51 episodes, never came out over here, and was done better basically by Tiger and Bunny. You're not missing anything, don't worry. Well, if you ever wanted robot fan service, this is the place for it. Kirameki Project debuted in June of this year and follows the story of Wrinkle and Kana, who pilot a giant doll-like robot against invading mechs from god knows where in this very bubblegum pink mech show. Also fan service from the girls and fan service from the robot itself is widespread, which is probably somebody's jam, but ends up just being very odd. And it was licensed by Anime Works in 2006. Super Robot Wars Original Generation was a series based on the long-running Super Robot Wars game series, but normally SRW, or SRT depending on your preference, was based on existing properties. This was all original work, which gave it a sort of disjointed feel because of its weird fusion of Super Robots and real ones. This OVA, which would be followed by a full TV series later, takes place after the second GBA game and kind of exists just to blow stuff up. All the character stuff was finished in the game, after all. Gun Sword could best be described as Trigun, but with robots. The story starts on a planet called the Endless Illusion, where a man in a swallowtailed suit is looking for a man with a claw for a hand. He meets up with Wendy Garrett, who is trying to find her brother, who is also taken by the claw. And when a bully in a giant robot shows up, the man, named Vaughn, summons his own robot and wrecks face. 
This starts them both on a quest to find the claw that leads them to the super spy named Carmen 99, a group of retired super robot pilots called the Eldorado 5, and other robot pilots that Vaughn had turned his back on previously. Traveling across the Endless Illusion can be hazardous to your health. It's best to have a gun sword at your side. The show was produced by AIC, directed by veteran mecha director Goro Taniguchi, and written by Hideyuki Karada. It is available in the States, courtesy of Funimation Entertainment, after they rescued the license from Genion in 2010. IGPX, Immortal Grand Prix, was a pair of series produced by Production IG and Cartoon Network. One series was a few minisodes long, and the full-length series that aired in 2005 both share the same idea behind it. In the far future, mecha are used for racing instead of fighting, but it's the kind of racing that also involves gunfire and missiles. Team Satomi, our group of main characters, has just scored a minor league championship, the IG2, and now they're in the running for the IG1. But they play for keeps in the big leagues, and Team Satomi is about to learn that the hard way. The series is currently available on DVD from Discotech Media, and it's well worth the watch. Gai King, Legend of Daikyu Maru, was nominally a reimagining of the original Gai King, but didn't share all that much with the original Gona Gai work. The names were similar or the same, but the story was more in line with a modern tack of super robot shows being less kid-friendly or at least kid-centric. It did roll in the same formula for the modern super robot reboot and did everything right. A fine reimagining of an old series in the 21st century. It is not currently available in the States at time of recording. Rian no Tsubasa was written in 1983 by Yoshiyuki Tamino as a spin-off of Aura Battler Dunbin, and then adapted into an ONA in 2005. It cranked out six episodes at a rather leisurely pace, and shares many similarities with the original Aura Battler Dunbin. Never made it stateside, not that big of a deal. And with that, we bring 2005 to a close. The next year would bring one of the more noteworthy shows to the fore, a show that would act as Gundam Wing or Voltron did for older Mecha fans. And next time, we'll see just what that show ended up being.